Alright, today's project is going to be this pair of coal hans. I mean, he wore, you know, I would say a lot, obviously. Looks like he's got a thin piece of sole guard applied to his original leather soles. So we're going to remove everything. We're going to do a leather sole, and then we're going to do a sole guard on top, clean and dye condition as best as we can. You see that welt right there? That's made out of paper, basically, it's fiberboard. And over time of that flexing, it has no room to stretch, and it breaks like that. So we'll glue that back together, patch that up as best as we can. All right, let's get started. Now I want to show you guys something. First of all, when we remove the heel, it's made out of paper. And it has a thin leather veneer on the top. Most quality shoes, when they make heel blocks, it's made out of stacked leather like this. There's no paper, there's no fillers, it's all leather. So we're going to basically have to make another heel block to replace this. Now most of the time that's an upgrade because it costs us money obviously for these to buy. But, um, and we don't really know actually if that heel block is going to break when we remove it so we don't take that into consideration when we give estimates but it's not a big deal sometimes you just got to do what you got to do and also let me show you this you see these stitches here when you look at it it looks like it's stitched together right basically that's what the stitches are there for that really isn't it's just a fake stitch you see it looks like they just stitched the leather sole and then glued it on top, made it look like it was stitched. It baffles the mind sometimes at, at, these, at these makers what they do. I guess it saves them time and money to do that. Not sure why, but anyway, when we get done, we're, we're going to, when we put the new leather sole on, we're going to re-stitch the whole thing. Blake stitch is what it's called, which is stitched from inside, inside the shoe, not outsole stitch like it's a good year welted shoe. All right, let's continue. All right, here's a perfect example of why you need to wear the shoes with a shoehorn. The back of the heel is usually stiffener. It's called a heel counter. There's nothing left here. You shouldn't be able to do that with shoes. For example, it's hard, okay? And it's a shame on the nice shoes, you want it to last as long as you can. You can't wear that, put the shoe on without a shoe horn because it crushes that material inside. And now what we need to do, we need to open this up, reinforce that inside and stitch it back up. Again, more work, more money. It's not a necessity. If you're careful with it, it should last you a lot longer so you don't have to spend more money fixing that. All right, let's continue. Now, once we took it apart, see this piece here? It's a piece of nylon that's structurally supporting that outer shape. So we don't want to cut this off. We want to glue that back in there. Now we got, we took all that crap that was just all crumbling out. Now the name is escaping me of this material. I, I, I'll find out, I'll, I'll post it later. Basically, we're going to put turpentine on this and it's got some glue also with it. With the turpentine, it kind of softens the glue and you can put this in there and give it some shape. And then once it dries, it'll stiffen up. And then you can put the leather liner back in there. All right, let's continue. All right, now we've got a set of shoe trees in here and we're gonna let these dry thoroughly before we continue. So that'll give it some shape in the back a little bit. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got the welt off the shoe. This is called a storm welt. The storm welt has a little bit of a edge on it that kind of goes up to the wall of the shoe. 
Now, this is a glue on storm welt. They do make stitched on storm welt, but those are for a Goodyear welt to choose. It's really difficult for consumers to tell whether this is Goodyear welted or not, or glued on. Now, could we have replaced this, put new ones on? I mean, we could, but it's not really cost effective to do that. This is a leather storm welt. This is for a Goodyear stitch shoe. See those little areas right there? That's where it gets stitched to the shoe. Can't really change a, a Blake stitch to a Goodyear. I mean, you could, but it's just not, again, it's not cost effective. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we glued the little cracks that were separating there. We're gonna clean it up a little bit. We're gonna re-dye it blue again before we put it on the shoe. We're gonna use some acrylic dye. Um, I believe it's an Angelus ac acrylic dye. All right, let's continue. All right, let's talk about the heel for a second. Now this is the original heel. You see that pattern right there? It's just a pattern. It's not insignificant to the structural support of the heel. Um, this is a combination heel, leather and rubber. Now there's lots of aftermarkets that we could use. This is one right here. This is another one there. Or you can simply just use a heel block, leather heel block, and attach the rubber lift to it and call it a day. Well, I always like to do the difficult jobs. Do I have to? No, not necessarily. I don't, but I like a little challenge. So I took this out. I'm going to make this a little pattern. Now the height of the heel, heel block I should say, is almost the same as the original. This is kind of half of it is worn off. You can't really tell the exact height. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this leather piece out and replace it with a rubber piece. Now it may seem simple, but it's kind of difficult time consuming to do. You've got to make sure that that pattern right there is identical between the rubber and leather so there's no opening or cracks in between the seams there. All right, let's continue. One thing I forgot to mention to you guys that I think I'm going to change something around. Now, most of the time, the wear pattern is on the corner of the heel, right? That's why most of the combination heels that are angled so you'd get more wear out of the rubber part and not the leather so what we're going to do here we're going to simply angle that like that so you'll get better wear of the rubber instead of that leather wear instead of that leather part being worn down the rubber lasts longer than this particular leather does because it doesn't absorb water. Now I already cut this piece identical to the original, but you know what? We're just gonna have to cut another one and angle it like that. I think this will be better. But this will be better wear. Yep, afterthought unfortunately. Okay, let's continue. All right, so at this stage, we've got the piece inside we still need to stitch it all the way around like that now next step would be here we're going to clean the surface with a little acetone okay and then we're going to apply a little bit of color like a dye basically and then we can condition polish or whatever do whatever we need to do after that because these um these need a little bit of color and regular polish is not going to uh, it's not going to do it all right let's continue All right, so we've got the welt on now, okay? Now, you gotta be careful not to change the shape of the shoe. 
it can be done very easily at this point because if it's the, if the welt is not put in the right spot, then it becomes wider or narrow, whatever the case may be. So there's impressions on the leather itself where the welt was. So you can follow that as a guideline. Now, just to be double checking the size, this is the midsole that we're going to reuse. And this is going to get glued back on here. Now you can kind of eyeball it to make sure that this is the right spot for the welt to be in. And you can adjust it now before you glue it on to uh, to make it narrower or wider, whatever you have to do. All right, so it's getting there slowly. Now we've got the channel open to stitch the entire sole, welt, midsole together, right? Now we're going to do, we're going to mark uh, for the sole guard. This is called the sole guard or sole protector. Uh, some people call it toppy, but toppy is a brand. It's not a, it's not a job. Now this is called a SVIG, S-V-I-G. It's a good product. It's Italian product. It's called Crispino, which is a pattern of the sole. It's kind of cool. It's a little bit rough, you know? So now we can easily do line across, put the sole on, be done with it. But I, I, again, I like, I like a little challenge. So what I thought about doing was, you see how we have a pattern for the heel, right? Why can't we duplicate that pattern for the shank area for the shoe? So that's what we're going to do. Now it's just it's just visual really guys. It's nothing it's nothing structural that that you know if it's a straight line, curved line or this pattern line doesn't really matter. As long as it holds and it wears well, that's what matters, but I don't know, I like to do things a little differently. So we took that same pattern that we had for the heel and mark the sole with it. We're gonna cut that out. And we'll take this pattern, mark the sole with it. Now, you're getting the Got to make sure that angle's right. See, that's a little bit too low, so now I got to raise the pattern to about here, about a quarter of an inch higher. Give it at an angle a little bit. I don't like that the way that looks there. So let's change that. Just visually, it didn't look good. Now I keep on cutting this. That changes the length of the sole to the you know to the toe. If I cut it too short, then I gotta cut a new piece. Alright, not too bad. A little bit more adjusting. like that okay so let's mark the sole all right so now we're gonna have to notch that out with a with a knife so the rubber sole guard kind of sits flush with the leather again there's a lot of people who don't spend this kind of time on sole guards like this. They literally just sand the leather, slap it on there, trim the edges, and then put some edge ink on the edge and be done with it. I, I don't know. Teach us to own. Some people say you must not be busy. 
with you know you're spending so much time on on shoes like this a pair of shoes well yeah I'm busy thank God I'm looking at about 30 pairs of soles on the floor lined up to be done all right notch it out just like this okay and then we'll sand the rest to rough that up to glue it before before gluing it though we've got to stitch it all right let's continue okay so we've got the sole guard glued on okay we've got the heel attached now the heel is just glued on to the shoe we need to secure it with nails I mean you gotta secure it with nails or else it's not gonna hold now these are I don't think you can see it but these are threaded nails there's threads on the on the nail itself Basically what that does, that almost acts like a screw, right? And um, once it's nailed, it's very hard to remove. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of nails that, that you could use. Regular nails that doesn't have any threads on it. But over time, the movement of the foot, sometimes those nails come loose. This is about the best way to do it. Now some people will use a, uh, a nailer and nail it from the top of the heel. Well, I don't like that. I, 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 you know, I try to keep the top lift as clean as possible. The only nails I use are brass nails. They're just really for decorations. They're not really, they don't act as structural, you know, support. Now sometimes these nails are a little hard to, to nail, so what I'll do is I'll pre-punch the holes so it'll be easier for the nail to go into. That's what I'm doing now. So I use about seven nails usually securing that heel base together. And once it's once it's all nailed in, it's not going anywhere. But there are different lengths of nails depending on how thick the, the heel is. You use that accordingly. Obviously you don't want to use it too long or else basically the nails will come out from the bottom. We don't want that. We want that heel to be nice and clean. Alright, let's continue. This is basically an um, edger. It kind of removes the corners. If you like doing belts and stuff like that to make a rounded edge. Because you're sanding the edges of the welt, the base, the midsole, and the sole. Sometimes the welt rises up a little bit. So this basically just... I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see if I can get closer. So it just takes the corner off. See it? Just a little cleaner look, finished look. That's it. Now we are ready for shine, polish, cleaning, conditioning, and all that, and we'll be ready to go. All right, let's continue.
All right, welcome back. We're done with the Kohan shoes. Didn't turn out too bad. The blue, uh, the blue laces are not a hundred percent match, but they're blue. So I know you guys are going to ask me how much this job costs because on the other video there must have been I don't know how many questions. Um, we agreed at $240 for leather soles and heels and sole guards. Now none of all those details were discussed. Like for example the heel base, the, the counter repair, um, doing this pattern on the heel and the sole that was all my doing customer didn't have anything to do with that now if we had talked about that previously then the price would have been much higher I know you some of you guys are thinking 240 is high but man there's a lot of detail involved in repairs like this and um, but I'm happy it's okay I chose to do those details and I'm, I'm very happy with that because I like the way it turned out and I knew it was going to look nice when I decided to do it this way and the customers will the customer will be very thrilled it's a nice surprise for him so all right thank you for joining me again I appreciate all the comments and um, you're welcome to share as much as you like we appreciate it we'll see you on the next one take care